I welcome each one of you, my fellow pilgrims to heaven, for our weekly Bible study. This is the second Sabbath school lesson study. God has been so gracious to each one of us. He brought us into the second lesson. We are studying this quarter on book of Hebrews, a very, very blessed book to learn a number of spiritual lessons. So we have the privilege to learn from this book, this quarter once again. Before I pray, I want to thank each one of you personally for upholding me in your personal prayers during the New Year weekend. As I have uh, told you, God has uh, blessed me and taken me to a number of uh, places to preach during the weekend of the New Year. I was in uh, Hyderabad city. On 24th, I preached in uh, Kokadpalli church. On 25th, I preached in uh, Hyderabad Central English Church. On 26th, I preached in a family worship in Miyapur. Then 27th, I traveled that night and reached uh, Andhra Pradesh, East Godavari district. And 27th, I went to a big village, Godapalli, where I grew up when I was small. There, one of the branch churches called Sangam Kodapa on 27th evening, they had a festival. I preached there. That was the place uh, almost half a century ago. My father conducted an evangelistic series, but only one family accepted the Lord and took baptism at that time. But now it has become a big con congregation. So I preached there. On 28th of December, I preached in a a village, it is like island, it is known as called Nadigadi Lanka. This is close to P. Gannavaram. This is in East Godavari district, what we normally call Konasima. On 29th, again I came back to Godapalli village to preach in another branch church. Godapalli big uh, village has uh, four branch churches now. In this place called Matavari Group, my father also conducted evangelistic series in those days, almost half a century ago. And one family came and accepted the truth at that time, but now it is a huge congregation. So they had that festival because all the churches cannot have their New Year Thanksgiving festival on the same day because the, some big congregations they conduct on 31st. Other smaller congregations, they normally conduct it uh, before 31st or sometimes after 1st. So they had it on 29th, the festival. I preach for them also. Then on 30th, another small village, which is also classified as a uh, island-like. Uh, this is called uh, Pillivari Pata. This is also close to that P. Gannavaram, and I preached there on 30th. And also, on 31st night, I preached in three places. One, Malkipuram, a small town. Then uh, second uh, church I preached the same day. I was there between, uh, I was there about uh, 6.30 till 9. Then, it's another uh, five kilometers we have to travel come to Lakkavaram and that is the village I was born and brought up when I was small. My parents served there in that village. I preached there the second message on that uh, eve of uh, entering into New Year. After that, another three kilometers we have to travel and we reach that Godapalli where my father worked about 14 and a half uh, years those days when I was small in two different uh, occasions and now that uh, 
Godapalli Church has become so huge congregation. And I preached there the third message. By the time I finished, it was something uh, like 12.20 in the midnight. They also have a, a big uh, Thanksgiving service. And they have a practice. Each family brings one big cluster of uh, ripened bananas. So probably more than 400 clusters of uh, ripened bananas brought by all of those families. And at the end of all the program, they auction them so that that money which comes, for, uh, comes uh, by auctioning, they use that one as investment offering. Then on 1st January, and uh, I preached three places. One uh, in Antarvedi, the coastal uh, village, Malkipuram. And that night, I went to preach in uh, Kesinpalli, again another coastal village. On 2nd January, I preached daytime in Palakollu. And evening, one church, again a, a huge congregation, the name of the village is uh, Udi Moody. I preach there. By the time I came down from the st stage, the now temporary made arrangement for the stage for this festival, it was 12.30 in the night. As soon as I came down, as I told them before, they have arranged a, a vehicle, four of those young men and the driver, and drove us from that village straight to that uh, Rajamandri town railway station where we boarded the train. So all of these different places which we visited, each day one place. Uh, many times we had also daytime some family Thanksgiving meeting which they wanted me to preach. God has been so gracious, granted me good health and also travel mercies. We reached safely home on fourth morning. I want to thank God for each one of you and your prayers. Because of all of your uh, fervent prayers, God kept me safe and also brought me safely back home so that I can continue to teach the regular classes. Let us pause for prayer before we open God's word. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much, granting us the second Sabbath to worship you and to learn your word from book of Hebrews. As we are going to learn from book of Hebrews, the second lesson, the message of Hebrews, bless each one of us, fill us with your spirit so that we can understand this wonderful message. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to each one of us. Bless every person and every family who are sharing these messages, who are uh, sharing this link and also sharing these thoughts which are presented in this message with their congregation, with their friends, so that they can be also blessed. Bless them abundantly, whoever is cooperating in spreading your message. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to us today because we pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. The message to... Hebrews. Now the question comes to each one of us, is this message only to the Hebrew people or Jewish people or sometimes we call them Israelites? Only the literal Jews, which means sometimes we say blood relations of Abraham. Not at all. It is not only for them, though it was written in the name of book of Hebrews or book to Hebrews. Because the author had a purpose and a burden to reach to the Jewish community, Jewish people with the message of Jesus. That's why he addressed that one as book to Hebrews. And who wrote this one? Definitely it was Paul. The early Christians, early preachers in the first uh, three centuries, they all upheld Paul as the writer. 
Only in the recent times, Saturn has brought a number of uh, number of uh, spurious uh, theories, uh, various names, but definitely. I also believe, like the early church, it was Paul who wrote this one. But if you look at the internal evidence, definitely you cannot say any other person's name, but only Paul. For example, let us look at chapter 13. This book has only 13 chapters. And this book was written in a sermon style. Each chapter, you can see it as a sermon with the same theme. There are many sermons preachers preach with the same theme. The sermon, entire sermon runs on one theme. Like that, this uh, each chapter here has one separate subject or theme. And book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 23, Paul says that Timothy is set free and I am going to come to you soon with him. And who ministered? To the Lord along with Timothy. It's undoubtedly it was Paul. Paul and Timothy ministered unto the Lord, served the Lord together. That's why Paul says, Timothy is set free, I'm going to come to you with him. And also chapter 13 verse 25, the last verse, he says, the saints from Italy greet you. Who went to serve the Lord in Italy? Who went to witness for the Lord in Italy? Only two, that was Peter and Paul. And who served the Lord with uh, Paul? It was Timothy. Timothy and Paul worked together for the Lord, witnessed together for the Lord. And uh, Paul took him to train him, to give him on-the-job experience. So that's why surely these two internal pieces of evidence. Timothy was set free, I am going to come to you with him. Chapter 13 verse 23, the saints from Italy are greeting you. These two pieces of uh, internal evidence show definitely it was Paul. But the question is always there. That question is why Paul did not put his name in this book? All the other books like book of Romans or Galatians or uh, Colossians, Philippines, all the other books. Paul mentions his name in the first chapter itself. Why he refrained from mentioning his name is because by this time, maybe it was around 65 AD, though we are not told in which year it was written. But definitely he wrote it from uh, Italy. And also when uh, Paul wrote this one, by that time, there was so much of uh, anger on Paul for the Jewish leaders. Why? All of us know in the early church, especially the first century church, majority of the converts were Jewish people. Major, majority of them converted to Christianity were Jewish people. All the disciples were Jewish people. So Jewish leaders particularly, they were so upset with Paul saying, this person is spoiling our religion. He is uh, converting a number of our Jewish brothers and sisters into Christianity. So they thought Paul was a threat to their Jewish religion. That's why they were so upset. That's why Paul realized and recognized that if they see his name in this book, they would burn the book and the leaders would uh, now issue a decree saying nobody should read the book. If you come across this book, you burn it or you tear it into pieces. They would have said that. So in order to avoid that anti-Paul wave, so to speak, in order to reach the people with the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth about Jesus, Paul did not include his name in this book according to my opinion. And also there is another aspect that I wanted to see Paul, he did not look for a name or fame or uh, he did not look for any 
special recognition saying, I wrote this book. He did not look for anything. He wanted all the honor and glory to go to Jesus. Only the message of Jesus should be taken to the people. That's all is the purpose. Not for a name or a fame or a, not anything, some credit to Paul. He did not look for that. We have to learn that important lesson. Often, we the human beings look for some name and fame and some credit to what we do. That should not be our outlook. Let the name of Jesus be glorified. It is sad to see many times, even on the worship day, people look for some special recognition, especially if somebody is a, a leader, somebody is a prominent person. They expect some kind of a special honor, special recognition, some special uh, felicitation, even on the worship day. That should not be our attitude because we want to give all the glory and honor to Jesus and Jesus alone. If you want to do something to honor somebody who may be leaving that place forever, choose some other day, not Sabbath day to do it. That's what I feel many times this is being done and uh, which I feel so bad. Instead of making Jesus happy, bringing glory to God, often we bring tears to God when we do something, some kind of felicitation, some kind of uh, special recognition for some individuals on worship day. It should be Jesus and Jesus alone should be magnified. The memory text comes from Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. We have such a high priest who sits at the right hand of the majesty. Majesty is the king of the entire universe, the ruler of the entire universe. He sits at the right hand. We'll come back to that one. But in this book, we have some special emphasis on Jesus, which we don't find in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We can read about his birth, his ministry, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, and his ascension. But many other spiritual aspects, especially some special spiritual insights about Jesus, are not there in the Gospels. But in book of Hebrews, we come across, we read, we understand in a simple explanation about the other aspects, other dimensions of Jesus and his life and his ministry. That's why book of Hebrews is so special for each one of us. And also book of Hebrews tells about also the second coming of Jesus, second coming of Jesus, for which we are waiting. That's why surely this book is uh, going to be a big blessing for each one of us during this quarter so that we can study and we can understand. We can study and we can understand. The first aspect which we are going to look at this week is Christ is the creator. Christ is the creator. It is only in the book of Hebrews not in the Gospels, this important truth is presented. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2, He has created the worlds in these last days through His Son. Who is the Son? That is Jesus. So, God has created, or God the Father, through His Son, created the worlds. I want you to notice the plural word. Now, this planet Earth is one world. But the plural word is used, worlds, which means there are a number of other planets on which there is life. There are beings like us, but they did not sin. There are a number of worlds. 
that's a plural word. I know there are some English translations like NIV, they translated it as universe. Through his son, he created the universe. It's a weak translation. It's a weak translation. Worlds will give us that highlight or the emphasis that more than one. Our planet is one world. There are a number of other planets in this entire universe. And also we are told Hebrews chapter 1 verse 10. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 10. You have laid the foundation for the earth and the heavens are your handiwork. Surely it is Jesus who laid the foundation. It is Jesus who created not only this earth and this planet, all the other planets in the entire universe, which we cannot see, which we cannot reach at present, but they are there. And also we are told, Galatians chapter 1 verse 14, 15 and 16. Again, it is Paul who says, it is the son, Jesus, who created visible as well as invisible objects and beings, visible as well as invisible. Visible means we know the trees and the animals and the birds and the mountains and the rivers and the sea. Yes, we can see them. But what we cannot see invisible is the other planets, other worlds. We cannot see them. But it is God the Son, whom we call Jesus, is the one who created. And the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1, to 3. In the beginning was the Word. Word was with God. Word was God. Verse 3. John chapter 1 verse 3, nothing was created without him, which means he created everything. Verse 14, John chapter 1 verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Who dwelt amongst us? The son on this earth as a human being. That's why definitely this important dimension about Jesus, Jesus is the creator, is not there in the gospels. It is presented for our blessing and benefit so that we can understand Jesus is not just ordinary person, not just a person who lived on this earth and performed some miracles. No, he is God. He is the one who said, let there be light. Light appeared. Everything he created with his word. Sometimes we have that uh, wrong understanding, a weak understanding, thinking that the one who created which is recorded in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, is the father. People have that kind of a, now, wrong idea. That is not right because New Testament clearly tells us, book of Hebrews clearly tells us that it is Jesus, the son, who created everything. All of the six days creation rested on the seventh day. It was God the son, God the son. But in the Old Testament, the Hebrew name, or Hebrew word used to explain him or to describe him was Yahweh, which we call Jehovah. Yes, that's why book of Hebrews highlights this important aspect that Jesus, God the Son, is the creator. And also we are told that Jesus is the king of this world and all the other worlds. Jesus is the king. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8, it says, O oh God, your throne is forever. These are the words which are spoken by God the Father. Oh God. So Jesus is God. And your throne is forever. Throne is for ruling, the dominion. So that's why he is there to rule forever. So he is the king. He is the king of the universe. But... All of us know in the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, God gave the dominion to Adam and said, Adam, you re-rule, you control and rule this planet Earth. All the birds and the animals and the human beings who are going to be born, you rule them. So Adam was supposed to be the ruler whom God appointed on this Earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, 29. 9 and 30. We can read that God gave this responsibility to Adam. We also know from Genesis chapter 3 that Satan in the form of serpent deceived Eve and Adam. By deception, 
by deception satan has stolen that rulership from adam that kingship from adam on this earth this is what in english we call satan usurped the power and adam by eating that forbidden fruit after living for 930 years he slept he died but definitely satan took over as the ruler of this planet that's why when jesus was on this earth twice he confirmed that john chapter 12 verse 31 and speaking about lucifer speaking about satan jesus said the prince of this world referring to satan and also john chapter 14 verse 30 also talking about the prince of this world about satan but we are told clearly that Jesus is the king. Why Jesus is the king? Because he is the creator. So he is the owner of everything. He is the owner of this planet and all the other planets. That's why he has the right to rule it. And also he is the sustainer. That's why he has the son. That is Jesus has the right to rule. That's why we are told in Revelation chapter 17 verse 14. Revelation 17 14. Jesus is described as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And also in Revelation chapter 19 verse 16, also it is mentioned that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Not only King for this world, all the other worlds is the King. Is the King. There is also another aspect we learn from book of Hebrews, which is highlighted here, which is not there in other books. That is, Jesus is better than all the angels. Jesus is superior to all the angels. In fact, angels worship him. We can read that in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4, 5 and 6. Angels worship God the Son, whom we call Jesus. That's why in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, when John saw the angel, when angel explained in the vision, John fell at the feet of angel to worship him. What did the angel say? John, don't do it. I am your fellow servant. I am your brother. Let us worship the Lord, that is Jesus. So that's why angels worship Jesus. Angels worship Jesus. And also, angels are also created beings. We are told in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 that angels are created as ministering spirits to minister unto the Lord and also to minister unto the people who are going to be saved, which means all of us saints, they are created to minister unto us. That's why they are created beings. And also we are told in Ezekiel chapter 28, speaking about Lucifer, verses 14, 15 and 16 saying, from the day you are created till the iniquity was found in you, you are perfect. So that shows Lucifer also was a created being, but he had that madness. He wanted to be equal to the creator. He wanted to be just like God to rule the entire universe. That's why in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 15, Lucifer was saying, I will be like the most high God. I will be like the most high God. I want to be like the most high God to rule, to control everything, to own everything. How can he do that? Because he is not the creator, he is a created being. Created being cannot be equal to the creator. There is also another uh, aspect. That is, Jesus took the human form. He became incarnate person on this earth. Hebrews chapter 1 talks about the divinity of Christ. He is God, he is the creator, he is superior to angels. And angels worship him. He has the throne forever. So it all shows the divinity, full divinity of Jesus Christ. But in the second chapter, we read about the humanity of Jesus, how Jesus incarnated and lived on this earth as a human being. He took the flesh like our flesh, blood like our blood, bones like our bones. He became one like us. He became our brother, physically speaking. This is what we read in chapter 2. But he was a perfect human being. 
he did not sin. What was the purpose for his uh, incarnation on this earth? One, to destroy the devil who has the power of death. We can read that in Revel Hebrews chapter 2 verses uh, 12 to 18. The purpose is to destroy the devil one day because he became a human being and he lived a perfect life on this earth honoring the Ten Commandments in his life, observing all the Ten Commandments, living according to the light of God's instruction, which we call Bible. And also there is another purpose. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, he took the human form, he became a human being in order so that he can become a merciful high priest for us in heaven, a merciful high priest. That's why his humanity is presented or is incarnation, the purpose for incarnation. And also we are told in Hebrews chapter 2 verses uh, 10, 11 and 12, the purpose, for his, the purpose for his incarnation was to help a number of those who want to be saved by his grace. So he becomes the captain of their salvation by his death and his resurrection. He opened the opportunity for salvation for every sinner if they choose to be saved. So that's why his uh, incarnation is the purpose to open salvation for every sinner who wants to be saved. That's in the book of Hebrews. And also there is another aspect which is highlighted here. Jesus is our mediator, mediator between God, that means God the Father and us. Why there is a need for a mediator? Because of sin, we are separated. Human race and God are separated because of sin. And sin blocks us from God. But it is Jesus who made the way and mediated between human race and God the Father. So he's the mediator. For example, it comes, just so I'm using an illustration, between wife and husband on this earth, in a number of places, due to various reasons, they don't live together, they don't stay together, they stay far from each other, they separate. But somehow, a pastor, or a church elder, or a friend, or a family member takes initiative to mediate between that wife and husband who are not living together anymore. They're almost separated. But through the mediation of that person, and there are a number of uh, families, there are a number of uh, wives and husbands who are separated for some time, sometimes for many years. They come together, they join together, they live together again. Likewise, human race, because of sin, we are separated from God. But because of Jesus and his uh, mediation, we are united again. We are reunited again. That's why many times when wife and husband are separated for a long time, because of the mediation of somebody, somebody mediated, they want to live together again. And we are calling this one these days, reunion reunion likewise the human race and god the god are reunited again because of the mediatorship of jesus christ that's why uh, we are told in first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 there is only one mediator between us and god that is jesus christ that is jesus christ only one mediator no other mediator because there are churches today, they believe, they uphold, even they worship Mary as the mediator between human beings and God, they think that way, which is not in the Bible. Bible tells there is only one mediator, that is Jesus Christ, God the Son. And also, there is another uh, important truth about Jesus is, Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is our better high priest. 
among all the high priests, all of us know, the first high priest was Aaron. Aaron had his weaknesses. When uh, Moses went up to receive the Ten Commandments, he was there for 40 days. People put a pressure on him and said, you make us a golden calf. He made it. And he declared and said, tomorrow is the worship for our God. And he made them or he allowed them to worship that golden calf. So he had his weaknesses. But all the other uh, high priests, all the other high priests, they had their own weaknesses because they were human beings. But Jesus is the perfect high priest. That's why he is called the better high priest. Again, this important truth about Jesus is highlighted in this book that he is our high priest. We don't have this truth in other books of the New Testament or in the Old Testament. There are maybe a few glimpses here and there, but it is book of highlight book of Hebrews, it is book of Hebrews which highlights this important truth about Jesus. That's why book of Hebrews highlighted Christ and his uniqueness as God, as creator, as a divine being and also as also a perfect human being. At the same time, he was fully God and fully human being at the same time. That is a mystery to understand for us at present. It is a mystery for us. How can a human being be God? Or how can God be a human being at the same time? It is beyond our imagination. But book of Hebrews highlights on that. So Christ is our high priest. That's why our memory text comes from Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. We have such a high priest who sits at the right hand of the majesty. That means the ruler of the entire universe. Who is that one? That is God the Father. And Paul was using an analogy. In the olden days, the king put a throne on his right side and his eldest son, who is going to be the next king after him, he gave him training. So eldest son, when he reaches his youthhood, he came from time to time and sat with his father on the right side of the throne so that he can learn how to judge people, how to reward people when they do something good, how to punish people when they do some criminal activities. All of that he learned from his son. That's why any time on the throne, the person who sits on the throne at the right side of the king is always going to be the next king, next ruler. And it shows that important aspect. We have such a high priest who is sitting at the right hand of the father, which means he is going to be the king of kings and lord of lords. At present, this world is in the hands of Lucifer, in the hands of Satan, under the rulership of Satan. But soon, this world also will be coming under Jesus to rule after the millennium. He is going to be coronated as the king of this planet. That's why book of Hebrews highlights these important aspects about Jesus and these important qualities, important aspects in the life of Jesus, in the being of Jesus, God the Son. When we say God the Son, He is just like the same. Again, book of Hebrews which highlights, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, He is the express image in every aspect. He is the same like God the Father. In every aspect, He is the same in power, in essence, you name anything, is just like the same. If you want to understand a human example I'm using, human example I'm using, that is, in this world we have twins, the brothers. They look almost the same. Sometimes, or many times in fact, 
uh, people who are others, like people from other families. They have hard time to identify who is the eldest and who is the youngest among the twins. It's hard time. Often, even father gets confused who is the eldest and who is the youngest among the twins. Mother, but mother recognizes, mother knows. But here, we also have some rare phenomena, triplets, three brothers or three sisters are born at the same time. So three brothers, they're identical, identical twins. So likewise, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're identical, which means, but uh, here Paul is highlighting about God the Son. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 saying, is the express image exactly the same in every aspect like God the Father. That's why book of Hebrews gives us a number of insights which we don't have in the Gospels, which we don't have in the other books of the New Testament. That's why book of Hebrews is a very, very important one for each one of us. Finally, book of Hebrews also highlights about the second coming of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 37, he that comes will come will not delay. Yes, that is the hope of each believer, each Christian, wherever they live, whichever generation they lived, that is the hope, second coming. We want to be with the Lord. That's why book of Hebrews, the message of Hebrews, it's not only for the literal Jews or uh, blood relations of Abraham, but rather whoever believes in Jesus, whoever believes in the God of the Bible, they are the children of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3 verses 26, 27, 28 and 29, 26 to 29. So if you have faith in God, like Abraham, you are a son, you are a daughter spiritually. So that's why we are often called as spiritual Israelites or spiritual Jews because we have faith in God. We believe in Jesus as God and as our Savior. That's why the book of Hebrews highlights that it is Jesus who purged us. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, he purged us from our sin. That means he made us holy by his sacrifice. Because of that, we have the assurance for salvation. What a wonderful theme. What a wonderful emphasis about Jesus and his uniqueness and the speciality of Jesus Christ, God the Son, which we don't understand much in the other books of the Bible. That's why Book of Hebrews, a very, very special, a wonderful book to receive a number of blessings in this new year during this quarter. Let us study this one and learn this deeper truths which Paul presented in a simple way each one of us can understand. You need not to be a theologian to understand, to grasp this important highlights or insights about Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless each one of us during this quarter by studying this book, understanding various aspects about Jesus and our salvation. We can come closer to Jesus. We can become believers strong in the Lord. If that is your decision, we are going to conclude this lesson study with a word of prayer. But I want to appeal to each one of you to share this message, to share this link with others. All of us know my YouTube uh, is Professor Sharad Babu. Uh, I'm so grateful to a number of people whom I met during this uh, New Year weekend time. A number of church members, a number of pastors told me, we are waiting each week for this 
Sabbath school lesson study in English and those who understand my mother tongue, Telugu also, they were saying, we are waiting for this one so that we can listen to that and some of those ideas which you are presenting are very helpful to us. We are sharing with our congregation. Some of the pastors said, we are uh, listening to your message or your presentation, the Sabbath school lesson study, which we are also sharing with our congregation. May the name of the Lord be praised. If this is going to be some blessing for you, share it with others so that they also can receive the blessing. But if you have not subscribed, if you have not subscribed so far, you can subscribe this one. This is uh, totally free so that immediately you can get the notification so that you can be blessed. Thank you. God be with you. God bless you. Let's uh, pray and conclude this lesson study. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for Jesus and his sacrifice. We want to thank you for a number of insights which we did not understand clearly. But by studying book of Hebrews, we came to understand this week that Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the same like God the Father in every aspect. Jesus is the one who is above angels, superior to angels, and angels worship him. Thank you, Jesus. And also, you are our mediator. You are our high priest. And you are perfect. Thank you, Jesus. And especially, you are better than all the other high priests. As we are going to learn more about that in Hebrews chapter 7. Thank you, Jesus. And also, you are the mediator of the better covenant, the new covenant. Thank you, Jesus, for that also. Help each one of us to grasp these important insights so that we may have a better understanding of you and your ministry and your salvation which is free and open to all the sinners. Help each one of us to make that important choice to choose you as our personal savior. Lord, bless all of those brothers and sisters who are sharing this link, sharing this video, sharing these thoughts with others so that others also can be blessed and be drawn closer to you. Thank you, Jesus, and keep us safe. And we are in the third wave of this pandemic again. And uh, we need your uh, special protection for each one of us and guide us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. Oh, before I say thank you, I know there is, a, again, alarming situation. A third wave of coronavirus in a big way spreading. So, those of us who are living in the cities and towns, again, we are surrounded by this danger of the third wave. And also, the news is uh, now in the last two days, again, a frightening news that another new variant of coronavirus has erupted in France. They are naming that one as IHU, or you may pronounce that one IHU, 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 or IHU. That also, they say, equally dangerous. It's also spreading fast. Yes, we are uh, very much worried and downhearted. In this new year, we thought at least there is a hope uh, to get out of this or uh, to be freed from coronavirus. But again, it is uh, spreading like wildfire. Continue to take all the precautions. And also, we will lean on Jesus for his protection and his guidance. Thank you. God be with each one of us. If it is God's will, we will study the third lesson next week. Until that time, may the Lord be with us, protect us, and guide us. Thank you. God bless you. Continue to uphold me and this ministry in your personal prayer. God bless you.